guys, and today I just thought I'd come to you with a video talking about CSS layout using floats. Now, you guys may have noticed that a couple of months ago, my CSS videos came to an end. That's because I felt like I'd learned everything there was to know about CSS and that particular language. I was looking through my videos today, and I realised how much more I've learned since then, and how much more appropriate ways to do things I've learned. Um, so today I just thought I'd remake that video. I'm still going to keep the old video because it's still a completely valid technique, but we're going to enhance it a bit and do it the proper way um, and the way that you see it done on most professional websites. That's using something called float. So we're just going to take an HTML document with no styling and write some really simple CSS to get it into a layout. Um, first thing I should note is that this video normally takes me quite a long time to do so we're not going to be really going into much detail I'm just going to be writing the CSS and explaining the layout bits as I go along um, so it's worth noting that you are actually going to need to know the basics of what HTML and CSS bits are if you're going to do this we're just going to talk about how to put them all together into a CSS layout. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. As you can see, I've got the HTML document and the CSS file open in split view here, so we we can look at them both at the same time. Let's just take a butcher's at the HTML um, for our page here. The critical thing here. We have a style sheet, declarations to the style sheet that we have open, so you need that style sheet declaration in there. We have a wrapper, and then inside that, sandwiched inside that, we have all our, all our elements that we're going to need. So our header, our sidebar, and our footer. It's critical if you're going to do a fixed width layout, then everything's inside of a wrapper, because that's what's going to take control of the whole layout. So, um, that's what we, that's what we're gonna use our footers there, and all that. So, let's go back to our our, our web browser split here. Sorry about that. On this page. And let's start muscling it into shape. So, firstly, what we're going to do, do is you'll, you'll see this done in a lot of CS files. It's not entirely necessary here, but it's a good thing to do. Is we're going to use some for a reset. That means we're going to get rid of all the default margin and padding that browsers apply, so we can have more control over it and we can apply it ourselves. Just gonna say margin and padding zero zero. I'm gonna save that. See a lot of things changing now. There isn't a space between the paragraphs. There isn't a space between the title, but it's left room for us to write that stuff ourselves. And as designers. That's what we want to do. Um, so, I'm not going to be showing you the result every time, otherwise, we're going to be here all day. I've just shown you that because that's a pretty major change. What what we're going to do is get our hand on that wrapping div. If you saw in the HTML, it's got a div with an idea of wrapper that wraps all that content. So we're going to get our hands on that. And we're going to define a width, a static width that, that can't change. This is what this type of layout, a simple two column fixed layout is going to do. So for the purpose of the screencast, we're going to define it as 900 pixels. Now often you'll see these in the middle of the screen. so. What we're going to do to get that is define margin zero auto, so our page is always going to be in the 
me dump the screen. Next thing we should do is um, get our hands on, on the header. Did with an idea of header. And that's the element that in our HTML, in our case, contains our, our title. So I'm just going to say um, we need to define margin, otherwise it'll be right up against the paragraph elements. Because remember, we 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 chose not to um, let the browser define margin for us. So that means we have to define it. So in my case, we're going to say three pixels top and bottom, and no margin on the left and right. That will just give us a bit of space. We're also going to say on the inside, give it some padding. I will say 30 pixels. And I'll just give it a border. Two pixels solid. Black. So now we've got our header area sorted out. I think that'd be a good place to save and look at where we are. I typed in background and not border. You have to get the right um, values for the right properties, obviously. Correct it to border, then save. We see we've got this nice header area with a border. So, but now what we really want to do is get our columns going. That's the whole point of this tutorial, showing layouts. So let's do that. What we're gonna want to do first is get our get our hands on what we decided in HTML was the name of the main content area. So I happen to know, and again, I'm only not showing you because this um, screencast can get quite long. I happen to know that it's a div with an ID of main content. And right off the bat, we're going to use something called a float, which I introduced at the beginning of the screencast. What a float allows you to do is float it somewhere somewhere um, on the screen. So if we've got two elements, one's floated to the left and one's floated to the right, and there's enough space, they'll go up next to each other. So that's what we want to happen. So when a float, one element to the left and one element to the right. Now, by its nature, if you're going to be using float, um, you need to define a width because that's what tells the other, the other element whether the float can accept room for that other element. In our case, our sidebar. Um, in this case, we'll just have to um, guess right now what widths are going to fit it. We can um, check that out more when we when we look at it. But we're just going to say padding five pixels. Margin. Pixels zero. We're also going to say um, border
to pick solid black. For the right side bar, we're going to define some other values. We're going to say, um, side content, and again, that just happens to be what our sidebar is called in this case. Float. Right, and I might just leave it there and save it and refresh the page just so that you can see what happens if a float isn't defined for an object. Um, I would just put the footer content up here instead of the sidebar because the sidebar doesn't know where to go, so we need to tell it where to go. Um, what we need to do is find out how much space is remaining from our, from our wrapper. So um, we've already spent a. 605 pixels of it and there's 900 pixels in the uh, thing so that's that's going to leave us um, like 295 pixels to play with then we're going to use 80 pic uh, 5 pixels of padding on the sidebar so I'm going to say um, width to 80 pixels and again we can fine tune this as we go along save that and see what it looks like looks much looks much better now we've got uh, we've got our two column layout going on but there's some things that we still haven't dealt with. We want this to have. Actually, I'm going to give this padding of three pixels because it's a smaller area. It needs to be pushed down by pushed down by the same amount from the main content area save that and we see the foot is up here because as I was saying before if a float if a float doesn't have enough space it just goes down to the bottom so we're gonna keep tweaking values and until we make sure it has enough space so we're gonna say we're gonna just guess we're gonna say 275 Save that. I probably could get. You have to experiment at this point. Um, probably could do with a bit more. I'll just give it two seven three. And 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 there we go. We've got a layout. But our our, our foot is still out. It's a bit weird. It's on the same level as the sidebar, and we can't c control it independently yet so how do we deal with that well unsurprisingly when they target the footer <coughs> and we finished using float so on this element we're gonna tell it alright don't respect don't respect floats anymore because we've finished using them so 
you need to say clear both uh, and we're using that because we've used a left and a right float since the last time we cleared and the last time we cleared was the start of the document because we haven't cleared um, and we're just going to give it a border just to make it look consistent So basically, if if there's one thing you take from this tutorial, clear let it be that if you're using floats, you need to clear them. See now the now the footer's on its own line, and um, so that really is good. The content the content areas not the same height, but that's just because we haven't got enough content in there if we had more content it would it, it would work um because we zeroed out the margin and padding i think what i'm going to do just to show you that they are individual paragraphs is that i'm going to define a line height of 30 pixels and I'm going to say um, on each paragraph apply a top and bottom margin of 3 pixels nothing on the right or the left so save it and refresh and maybe we could do it with a little less line height but uh, Fundamentally, we've got our, we've got the result that we wanted. So, I think I'm just gonna dumb the line height down a bit. It looks a bit more um, civil now. You can see the like breaks in the paragraphs. So, with that much CSS code and in about um, 90 minutes created a simple CSS layout anyway this is getting to be a long video so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up now and happy CSSing anyway guys hope you've enjoyed this hope you got something out of it and lots of lots of fundamental concepts there and if you liked it please subscribe check out some more of my, my videos and I'll be sure to See you in the next one. Bye-bye.